it's over right now. This is the story of how a family of swallows was spared by one well-placed shot. When we moved into our new house a few years back, I noticed immediately that the area had a lot of tree swallows. This is a very beneficial bird, a native bird, that eats a ton of insects. So I wanted to help them out and I put up this birdhouse, specifically designed for tree swallows and bluebirds. And it took no time at all, hours actually, for this up and coming male to win the lottery and claim this brand new house for himself. He quickly got himself a girlfriend, or maybe he had the girlfriend before he found the house, but in any event, she took a shining to it, and in no time, they were moved in and starting to think about their family. Then, a couple days later, I noticed that both of them had become seemingly very energetic. At first, I thought this was just something to do with mating, but quickly realized that they were under stress. And the reason for their stress was this bird right here an invasive house sparrow. He was eyeballing their house, and when a male house sparrow is hopped up on hormones, he is an unstoppable force. He looks cute, he looks cuddly, looks like something you want to have on your finger singing to it, but these things are vicious killers. A tree swallow seems like about the same size and probably a formidable fight for a house sparrow, but this couldn't be further from the truth. A tree swallow's beak is small, it's soft, and it's designed for catching insects on the wing. By comparison, a house sparrow's beak is fat, hard, thick, and powerful. They use them for crushing seeds, but in a fight, they use them for crushing bones. Now, a tree swallow can more than hold their own on the wing. Short-winged house sparrow has no chance against the grace and speed of a tree swallow. However, if the fight goes into the house, it'll be like a Sherman tank versus a hang glider. And this is the result if the house sparrow can catch the tree swallow already inside. So once the house sparrow gets in the house, the tree swallows know better than to go in. All they can do is hover on the outside, do their best to try to torment the sparrow so that he'll leave. Of course, this rarely ever works. House sparrows began making their way across the continent of North America in the early 1900s. When my grandfather was a boy, they actually could put out these community houses and they would bring in tree swallows and purple martins and other native insect eating birds that were very beneficial to the farm. They kept the mosquitoes down. As the house sparrows started to expand their territories, the martins, the tree swallows didn't stand a chance against them and soon every dedicated home that these farmers were building for beneficial birds were taken over by these nasty little house sparrows. In time, people got clever and started designing houses that were specifically built to deter house sparrows from taking over. A house sparrow is a fat little chunky bird, and what they tried to do was find an exact size of a hole that would make it tough for the house sparrow to get in. They also designed different elements of the house itself to disrupt the flight pattern of the house sparrow or just simply make it difficult for them to enter the house. In large part, these worked, but still, a very tenacious house sparrow will not be stopped. And you can see this guy, although it is a tight squeeze, he makes it work. A day or two goes by, and I'm hoping that the house sparrow will change his mind. I make an effort to continuously scare the sparrow out of the house, hoping that he'll eventually just tire of me and move on, but he doesn't. Every single time I walk away, he flies right back in. He clearly has a lot more energy than me. I need to move to plan B. The shot is taken from inside my bedroom, and as far as the distance goes, this is a chip shot for my FX Impact, which is a pre-charged pneumatic, high-powered air rifle. Now you might think to yourself, not cool shooting a residential area. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with you in most cases, 
But in this one, you gotta understand, I know my gun inside and out, and I know exactly where the shot is going to go, which is straight into the long wetland behind my house. Couple things as we walk out. One, it's very, very important that you don't take such shots haphazardly. I knew full well there was two spots where I could take a safe shot. In addition to that, it's also a weekday. It's uh, 9 a.m. I postponed going to work a little bit so that I could actually get rid of this damn bird. Kids are at school, people are at work, and it minimizes the shot, the risk of the shot, even more. I just want to make clear that I would not advocate taking a shot like that unless you know exactly what you're doing. Now all I gotta do is patch that up. That I can do. If I had let this gone, uh, uncontested, he would have absolutely taken over. It was lucky there already wasn't babies in there. He would have killed them and laid his own nest on top of their corpses. I see a lot of older guys uh, on forums, a lot of older air gunners talking about how when they were young, they killed and killed and killed. And now they're getting older and they lament, uh, regret what they had done. Here's what I'm saying as I age. I will never stop killing these things and neither should you. Just because you're a big, giant human doesn't make this thing non-vicious. It's up to you and me to kill as many as we can, try to level the playing field as much as possible. You want to throw your hands in the air, you want to say there's just too many, you can't even make a dent, you go right ahead. I am not going to be part of that discussion. Not my regular happy-go-self, but when it's on my land and it's my birds, <laughs> yeah, uh, I take it personal. Apologize for the shaky cam today, guys. I did the best I could. Uh, my priority was not to make a video. It was to murder that bird. After an hour or two, the swallow started peeking in the hole, and by the next day, they decided that the sparrow was no longer a threat, and they re-entered their house and the offspring loved the house so much that they actually returned with the parents hoping that they could still live in their basement. <laughs> I took it as a sign that I needed more houses. I put up two more and they were quickly occupied. So that's the story. That's my story. That's my swallow's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay vigilant.